So we saw the concept of inheritance in action. How can we now ensure that our choose your plan H1 tag actually doesn't get the same style as the H1 tag in the first section in the product overview? Now we get that same style, we get ant and antic white color, which we override with the class, but not the font family. We get it because of that H1 selector. We can verify this if we inspect that H1 tag, the green one. Here you can see the H1 selector is passing this font family. I don't want that, I want to use the default one. Since I want to use the default, there are two ways of solving this. The first one is that we also go to section title and set font family to inherit. This is a special keyword which simply means please use the inherited style Basically, you can think of that increasing the specificity of inheritance for that specific property only though. This will work since we have section title on the second H1 tag. So if we save this, we can reload the page and now we actually get a different style here. If you inspect this now, you see font family inherit is taking effect and that actually is Montserrat as you can see if you tick it off. Even though that seems to be not used, it actually is because of the inherit keyword. But this is not necessarily the best way. If we ever have another H1 tag, which maybe has a different class, but also should use the default font family, we have to add font family inherit on that class too. Would be nicer if we could do the opposite and simply say, hey, this H1 tag in the first section, that should be the only one that gets this font family instead of all H1 tags by default. So instead of excluding anything that does not get it, we should simply only include this first H1 tag. Now, of course, one way of doing that would be to simply assign a class or ID to that H1 tag. So we could name this first section title, but that's a really dumb class name because it's probably not getting reused. So a class might not be the best choice. And if we ever add a first section, we should rename this to second section as it wouldn't make sense otherwise. Now we could turn it to an ID and now the reusing thing wouldn't be a problem. An ID wouldn't be super bad here, but we already have an ID on the section. Semantically, maybe we don't want to add one here. And still we have the naming issue. So one other thing we can use is a so-called combinator. A combinator allows us to combine multiple selectors to be more precise about what we want to select. We can add a combinator to that H1 selector to narrow down which type of H1 tags we want to select. And we can say we want to select any H1 tag that is inside of an element with the ID product overview. So in our app that is inside of that first section. We add such a combinator by, or we combine this selector, so to say, by adding the other selector that matters to us. In our case, this ID selector. We add it in front of the H1 tag. So this can be read as any H1 tag inside of product overview. And actually H1 doesn't have to be a direct child. There could be elements in between. So you could have a wrapping div that would still work. I'll quickly add one for demo purposes. If you save this now and you reload the page, you see you got the same styles as before. Even if you go back to main CSS and remove the font family inherit property declaration from section title. So even if you remove that and you reload the page, you will see the second H1 tag still has a different font because now if you inspect the first one, only this one gets the font family Anton because now here we have a selector that only targets H1 elements that are nested somewhere inside an element which has the product overview ID, which of course only is the case for our first section in our app here. Now again, the div here was only used to demonstrate that it doesn't have to be a direct child. We can remove it and it will of course still work. And what we're using here is a so-called combinator because we combine multiple selectors. As a side note, if you use combinators, you also create a higher specificity. So if you still had a H1 tag after that, let's reintroduce the old one with sans serif, then you should still see that Anton gets applied. Let me show this to you by reloading the page. 
if you inspect the first font here, the first h1 tag, you see we still have font family Anton because our hashtag product overview h1 selector has a higher specificity, as you can tell by the order in the developer tools, than just the h1 tag. Even though the h1 tag comes second, so it comes later in the file. But, and that is the last important piece about specificity, the rule with more information to it, so to say, and this has more information because we narrowed down which h1 tags we want to stall. The rule with more information, like this one, wins over rules with less information, like this one. So the more specific rule has a higher specificity. Makes sense, I guess. Also, don't mistake this with inheritance. We're not inheriting a style from product overview here. We're setting a style only for h1 tags that happen to be inside product overview. It's not the same as inheritance because this is not passed down automatically. We're explicitly selecting h1 tags here. So this is the last piece about specificity and this is what combinators are. Now there are more combinators. Let's explore them in the next video.